Let the Eurovision Song Contest begin! Welcome to another week of the Dues Poir podcast. It's Belgium Woo-hoo! round two. It's rain in Belgium chocolate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's rain in Belgium chocolate. Amen. Um, so if you I... didn't hear last week, we did the first few entries uh, that Belgium has sent to the Eurovision Song Contest. Difficult for us is the fact that they have been to pretty much every single Eurovision Song Contest. So we've had a lot of work cut out, but I've enjoyed it. Have you enjoyed it? Well, I'm not sure that enjoyed is the word that we should go for the first set of songs that were sent to Eurovision by Belgium. That's right. There, there was some depressed, depressed, <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot, lot, lot of depressing, a lot of yeah. like worrying issues. A lot of um, um, failed I, marriages, a lot of suicidal tendencies involving I'm rivers. I'm throwing myself in the river. Yeah, life is, life is over. Our marriage is loveless. A lot of that kind of thing. Actually, um, one of our... Our uh, gorgeous listeners who actually resides in Belgium um, was sending us a little more information on the like the history of Belgium and and I commented of like why he was so depressed <laughs> and he was sort of giving us a, a little bit of an in depth look into uh, why Belgium was a little bit uh, depressed. Um, yeah, um, he, he was saying like he, he felt it was a combination of uh, obviously there was the older generation who still sort of, you know, had a lot of, you know, post-war, you know, issues and depression and there was not a lot of trust in the government. You know, he felt sort of Belgium had sort of been pushed around and manipulated by other countries and uh, the people did not have a lot of faith in their government. Um, what I actually did learn about Belgium Oh my lord! Forming a government is painful. Belgium actually has like the longest world record for the longest amount of time for a government to actually form. Yeah, it I was think I heard that. It's been like months. Yeah, years maybe, even like a year and a half I don't or know, something like, a like that. Year and a half or something. Yeah, like, but like everything to get like sorted out, and you're like, that's almost a term. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's at least half of your term. They're is just like them up to actually... the next election by the time they figured yeah. out who's in charge in that. And we can start it all over again. Yeah. So yeah, he was like, there was not a lot of faith in the in the Belgium government, and I'm like, well, how could they get anything done? I can confirm though, according to Wikipedia, mm. Sophie Wilmes. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Wilmes. Uh, she was previously the caretaker, head of the caretaker government, and now she has a permanent government as of March 2020. So Belgium is out of the clear for the time being. They've done it. <laughs> Good job, Belgium. <laughs> yeah. How long did this did this take to form? Like uh, two, three years? I can find out for you. Uh, not uh, that long. It's uh, since last so it wasn't October. like a year and a half. No, I don't think it was a year. What? Anyway, <laughs> we've got a, we've, oh my lord. <laughs> We've got to move on to talking about Eurovision. Yes. So um, yes. where we left last week, normally we do it from the start of a decade to the end of a decade, but Belgium, we've decided to split it up so we don't take on too many songs at once and have to skip over them. So this week we are doing from 1970 through until their first victory in 1986. Oh, spoiler! Spoiler alert! Sorry. Spoiler alert! Sorry, from their first, from 1970 to a big event that happened for Belgium at nine, in 1986. Is that better? What's going to happen? No one knows. Who knows? So let's get, oh. let's get straight into it. In 1970, and by the way, I have had three separate people tell me either my French pronunciation is fine, doing well, or uh, <laughs> if in the case of Alexander, absolute garbage and I should throw myself out of a 10-story window. That's what I took. <laughs> so I'm really sorry, it Alexander. Like, it sounds like the report card that you send home to one of, you know, you're like, oh, look, bless him. He's got a good personality, you know, can't count, but oh my he God. tries. Oh, yeah, okay. My That's the important skills, thing. 
I have come to realize a lot of the scores I added up for previous songs were absolutely yeah, abysmal because I always read mine out yeah. and total them up and then you read yours out, but you never total yours up. So I'm just trying to count and I'm, I'm, I cannot do math uh -huh. to save my life. Like I absolutely, uh -huh. if they were like, what's seven plus four, I actually so have what, to stop and think about what it. You what you're Plus saying, Jack, 11. is you've never you've never had to do math before because you're pretty. That's what you're saying, isn't it? I mean, because <laughs> you're pretty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 1970. So what I want, what I wanted to bring up with that is just bear with me, bear with my French, bear with my Dutch. One day we'll get to Ireland and it'll all be fine. 1970 was Jean Valet. I'm gonna say with the song Viennes Lublier, Come to Forget Him. And it finished eighth. What did you think about this one, Liz? Well, I mean, this one, basically, you know, it's it, it's about a guy telling a girl to forget the jerk who broke her heart. Exactly. Um, so, again, more happy cheerfulness um, from Belgium. Um, look, he wrote the song. Um you know, it's it's a good song. It's not it's it, it's not offensive, but it's not massively memorable. It's a you know, it's a bit slow. Um, what I can tell you, do you know that John was appointed a Knight of the Order of the Crown by His Majesty Albert II in 1999? I didn't That's know a little that. Bit, a little so bit should I say you. Sir Jean Valet? Oh, are you, well, I, do I add it? Is it? Oh no, he's a knight of the order. So is that? Oh. oh no, yeah, you're called sir. Are you called sir? Or are you called knight? I'd want to be called knight. No, if you get a knighthood, you become a sir. That's British, at least. Oh, is she well, Dame well, Kylie Minogue? Oh my god, that's an interesting question. I'll have to look up. <laughs> Sorry, continue. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I gave the song a five. I gave the performance uh, five, and the fashion a four. For a total, which of is. 14. What is it? What's the total? That's, that's ah! a total of 14. Am I right? Am I right? Uh, probably. <laughs> yeah, look, I pretty much agree with you. I thought I was really um, enamored with it at the start. I thought it had a big booming start. He does a lot of arm dancing, which, as you know, mm. I like that from Belgium yeah. with their finger dancing and their arm dancing. You're I all thought, about the finger dancing. Yeah, I'm all for it. I thought the three bridesmaids at the back were at the wrong event. They were meant to be at a wedding, like down the street or something, yeah. but they're here at Eurovision. But, but multitask, go from yeah. one to the other. Exactly. I've pretty much come to the same conclusion as you. Song three, performance four, fashion four for a total of 11. Yeah. I mean, it came eighth. So, which is, you know. Well, it's not hard to come eighth when there are nine songs in the, do you know what I mean? Oh, like, was, there was like 12. <laughs> <I know. laughs> 1971 was Jacques Raymond, who I believe we talked about last week, and Lily Castell with, and now, okay, knowing how people feel about my Dutch, I've tried to phonetically spell this one out. Huen oh, Morgen, Morgen. Huen Morgen, Morgen. Good morning, morning, which finished 14th. Oh, that too bad. Thank you. I'm proud of it's it. Yeah, that's um, uh, Jacques, who, of course, he appeared eight years previously in 1963. Mm -hmm. He came 10th. Uh, he came back this time, unfortunately, to come 14th. Now, it's a bit of an interesting one with this one because I watched the performance before I sort of looked up anything about the song. And it, oh, my God, Jack does some of the most awkward dad dancing that has ever been oh on the God. Eurovision stage. I'm like, so on the same page with you on this one. Such like uh, dad dancing. And I was sitting there and like whenever two people pretend, you know, to be in love and sing and dance at the same time, it is always awkward. And this is no exception. Yeah. But do you know that they were last minute emergency stand-ins? I didn't. For yes. What, for who? Who bailed? Okay, this no, this song was originally supposed to be done by the duo uh, Nicole and Hugo, uh, who'd go on to be uh, a married couple. Now, they actually went, they filmed the preview video for this. And if you watch the preview video, you actually see Nicole and Hugo, which I'll actually put up. There is some dancing on a boat that will haunt <laughs> your dreams. Uh, pretty much as they were about to uh, get on the plane to go, uh, Nicole came down with jaundice and ah. had to be hospitalised. Um, obviously, em emergency uh, medical. And they were like, oh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? 
Uh, so they went out and they got Lily and veteran performer Jacques to stand in last minute. Um, that's why they said there was so much awkwardness. Um, they also said that in the short amount of time that they had Lily and, and Jacques did prepare like a little dance number, but then when <laughs> they got to the stage, the way the stage was set up, they couldn't actually do it because you know, it had those like the step up yes. and so the little dance area. That explains the awkward swaying, right? Oh no, I think that's just, I think, I think. Jux was just standing there and she was going to dance around him. <laughs> <laughs> dance of the 12 males dancer. or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, so Lily moves her feet when she moves from side to side in this performance. Yeah. Jacques does not move his feet but yeah. moves from side to side. He kind of sways and it's, yeah. it's really noticeable. That's the problem with it. If Lily oh. like, wasn't so – if this was just him, I might not notice it. But standing next yes. to her while she's moving back and forth, you're like, dude, move your ankle. Move an ankle. Yeah. Move your damn face. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, bet, I mean, to be honest, though, because it's a song which, I mean, it means good morning, you know, morning, especially when you see the film clip. It's clearly about, oh, you know, two lovers who are like, oh, morning, morning, after they've yeah. been up all night doing it. So that's clearly the theme of the song by a married couple. To then come in last minute to try and cover that yeah you gotta just, kind of like pretend you've got chemistry yeah it's just very awkward so i actually gave the song a five i don't mind this the song performance three um because she was trying and fashion a one for a total of five plus three plus one is nine i've done yeah. pretty check that alexander i've done pretty much the same thing as you song three performance three fashion a five i clearly didn't yeah. mind the fashion as much as you did for a total of 11 yeah, I was not a, not a fan. Nineteen seventy two. It's Sir. Is it Sergey or Serge? Let's go Serge. Serge, Serge. and Christine Giseland with okay. Strap in. A la folie ou pas de tout, tout. Madly or not at tout. all. Finish seventeenth. Mm. Mm. What do you think about this one? <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, where do I start with this one? Oh, okay. So it is a guy and a girl on stage. Okay. I don't know what pisses me off more about this song. If it's the way that he stands there and looks her up and down like a pervert. Okay. Yes. Very noticeably. Or it's the way, or is it the way that he grabs her arm and just sort of holds her there? Or is it the way that he creepily sort of holds himself forcibly against her using her microphone? Um, and you just want to be like, you have a microphone. Go use your own microphone. Yeah, like, exactly. I, 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 I know they were trying to convey that they were all like, oh, we're all like passionate and horny. But she was clearly right. not into it. That's what I was going to say. Like, this is clearly a one-sided, like, passionate love affair. Passion. She's just there for, like, the tax break or something with marriage. Yeah, and he's there in their suit. She looks like she's wearing her nightie. Okay, to me, do you know what I could think? All I could think is she is just singing and playing along until the police get there yeah, until they to remove the madman who's ah. broken into her house. And she's just like, sure, I'll sing along. La, 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 la. Yeah. Looking out the window. Like, so yeah. These guys are wearing what I can only assume at least like the ugliest prom outfit in the history of the world. They're three backup yeah. dancers though. Three dead ringers for Dolly Parton in the 70s. <gasps> oh my god, you should that's exactly what I've written in my book. I've See? put three strip I've written three stripper Dolly Partons to the side. <laughs> right. Okay. So we're on the same page about Dolly Parton. I look there's not too yeah. much to say here. I've given the song a four, performance a four, fashion a three for a total of eleven. Yeah, it's, I mean, the song is called Passionately or Not, and I think this was followed by uh, Sergei's second song, which is entitled It Puts the Lotion in the Basket <laughs> or It Gets the Hose Again. Um, I gave the song a once, performance a zero, and fashion a one, and that is all for the Dolly Parton. For the Dolly Parton backup singers. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this one. Like, creepy. <laughs> well, maybe the next song will um, lift your spirits a little bit. They were meant <laughs> to be there in 1971, but they got jaundice. And yes. came back two years later. Nicole and Hugo with Baby Baby. And it finished 
last. Last. There's so much to unpack here. <laughs> I really just wanted. Yeah. Okay, so walk us through this performance. Oh, well, for a start, okay, they both have matching dark purple jumpsuits with rhinestones. Okay, think the fat Elvis like <laughs> suit okay <laughs> except they're obviously like the skinny purple version of like big fat vegas elvises okay they're matching they do matching uh choreographed uh dance moves and again the three dolly parton uh, stripper backup dancers are back plus one random giant yeah um who is standing like the guy is like 12 feet tall yeah. It's it's bizarre. It, it's absolutely bizarre. And I can't pick up his voice. I don't know what he's doing there. I think he was just too big. No one was prepared to tell him to like move leave. out of the way. <laughs> I think these What two, did you think of this one? Well, I think these two need to be forcibly kept away like 300 meters. Like we need to intervene and get a restraining order between these two yeah. on their behalf. Because I never want to see these two perform again. This is so camp, right? I, I love it. I, I love it. <laughs> I don't hate it. I'm on. I walk that line between lol. This is Eurovision camp gold, and also I'm yeah. kind of on the same line of. I never want to see these human beings ever again. Like, <laughs> oh my god. No, I'm. Yeah, I'm just like it's so awful. This it's one, mesmerizing. Hey, here's a bit of trivia. I I like sometimes the what are they doing now? Okay. Yes. From not, so in 1984, they because they went on to continue performing, and in 1984, they signed on to travel the world performing on cruise ships. Oh, I love that, which is so appropriate when you look at their performance. You're like, Oh, this was this was designed uh, for a cruise ship. So, who knows? Nicole and Hugo could have been the start of the coronavirus, exactly. Hey. You know, yeah. it's fitting that they're on boats because I get seasick anyway, so I may as well match my nausea to it. I, <laughs> look, I've got, I know I've gone in a different way. I thought about this long and hard, but I've given the song a one, performance a three, and a fashion a one. And I want you, if you ever watch this video back, if you haven't seen it, you really do need to look up Baby Baby by Nicole and Hugo. The oh, crowd, I'll, I'll put it up on Facebook. Yeah, the, the crowd at the end of this performance look like they hate themselves for being alive. And I want you to take a look at that again. Uh, that was a total of five for me. Go ahead. We Wow. We have very different reactions to this. I, I gave the song a three. I gave the performance a six because they are just so, they are so into it. Like they have their little moves. I gave the fashion a nine. Oh, that is wow. everything We've... I come to Eurovision for. That's a total of 18 from you. Total of five from that is me. A it is a purple rhinestone matching jumpsuit. <laughs> oh my god! All right, 1974, a whole different direction. It's Jacques Houston with the song Fleur de Liberté, which finished ninth. It's, it's, it's a nice message, um, you know, that he, you know, the flowers of liberty. It's a nice message. It's, it's got a good song. Although I will say, how big is his shirt collar? Okay, the whole, th right? It's like, it's stretching out from last year's contest to next year's contest. That's how bloody big his <laughs> collar is. It is bridging the gap. When Eurovision talks about bridging the gap, it's, exactly, it's talking right? about his shirt collar. This outfit to me is peak 70s Eurovision, like the flares and the mm. velour and the mullets. Uh, but my problem, I have a big problem with this, this in that he's left his backup singers in the dark without a light on. Yeah. Like, yeah. did he just get like the ugliest backup singers or is he too cheap to get a torch? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Jacques, uh -huh. what, what happened here? Well, I mean, he might have forgotten. Actually, the um in the week up in the in the week lead up to this, he was actually in bed with a terrible flu. And so had the flu all week and was all like and like man flu as well. So it was like, ah, I'm going to die, I will never make the contest. Ah, yeah. ah. And then managed to crawl out of his can I say a week into like a really bad cold, I am not looking that pretty. Yeah. Like are you are I you in one now, perchance? No, no, no. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm uh, <laughs> 
this is one week where I am not, but oh my God. Like if that was me, I would have come out in like sweatpants, still had tissues pushed up my nose yeah. um, and just like. Rah! Yeah. So for me, it. look, for me, this was a step up from 1973. I gave the song a four, performance a four, fashion a five for a total of 13. What did you give it? Where? We're almost the same. I gave the song a four. I gave uh, the performance a five and I gave the fashion a five. I actually really like his suit. Like the suit itself is really good. It's just a ridiculously like his shirt is just get out of here. <laughs> yeah. It's like fitting and then some, right? He could fit like all yeah. the backup singers. In the I was going to say, if you were flying over to Eurovision, you would want to be on his plane in case there was an accident because you would just get his <laughs> shirt and you would just paraglide <laughs> yeah, to safety. To safety. <laughs> 1975, yeah. Anne Christie with the song. Okay. Helluchig Zane. Helluchig Zane. Being happy. It finished 15th. <laughs> Can I say, if I had to just look at the words, Geluk Zane, I would not think, oh, that definitely means being happy. Yeah, I know, right? That's, <laughs> that's not are. how it sounds. <laughs> They're a funny bunch. Now, Anne shows up to this one in what I think is her nightgown. Like, mm. was that the style? Yeah. I don't know. It's not for me. But she and did like, and, and the backup dancers as well. Like, what? Are, what? Yeah. This what is are they the wearing? Weird. She does. They look like Dementors, actually. Those backup singers. But she does a lot of <laughs> finger dancing, which is a trend in Belgium, which I like. She switches to English halfway through the song, and I yeah. was like, for a second, I was like, "What? I just got really good at Dutch. This is amazing. How did I do that?" Was, just, it's like I'm sensing what she's saying. Yeah, I'm like, I yeah. figured it out. I've got a third brain. <laughs> third brain. I don't have the first one. So I don't have too much else to say about this. I really didn't mind this one. What did you think? Oh, well, it's actually, I, I really like her, her dress. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. It, it's a nice dress. I'm not sure it was absolutely right for the song. Um, all I, I looked up, all I can tell you is that Anne Christie, um, uh, the Being Happy song, she died at age 38 from cervical cancer. Oh, that's upbeat. Thanks for bringing that onto the podcast. I, I just saw it for the Belgium episode. Well, now I feel um, like I should give her more points. I know. I think I, because I found that fact out and then I watched her thing. So I think I might have given her higher points because I felt really bad. Well, what did um, you give her? I gave the song a four. I gave her performance five and a fashion a five. Four, five, and five for a total yeah. of 14. I've actually given the song a seven. I really like this song. Performance a five, okay. fashion a six for a total of 18. Moving on to 1976, and it's Pierre Rapsat with Judy et Compagnie, or Judy and Co, as it's pronounced in English. It finished eighth. I really like this song. I really liked this song. I, I wasn't oh. expecting it. I like any song where they insert melodramatic string, like orchestral strings, you know, that it's like, ooh, oh, ooh, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Bittersweet yeah. Symphony or Time of Your Life by Green Day. I love that. I see. I'm. But did you actually examine what the lyrics of this song are? No. Did you look into who Judy? Let me. Let me just give you a little bit of an insight into the actual lyrics about Judy. Um, and these are the lyrics of the song. Um, Judy, Judy is not pretty. Oh. Judy. Yeah, it gets better. Judy, the one you forget. As soon as the night ends. Oh, Ouch. oh, okay. And then he goes on to explain, yeah, you know, she's not pretty and she's not happy. She wishes she was, but, you know, she's not. And because of men, like, you know, never calling her back, um, she turns to, like, drug and alcohol. Um, though, although, at the same time, she might be the woman that you end up marrying. Um <laughs> Judy, Judy, oh, wait for it. The one you would sacrifice for a handful of snow. <laughs> oh, my God. No wonder the bitch is drinking. I'd be drinking if my husband would sacrifice me <laughs> for a handful of snow. What the hell? Oh, my what God. What the hell? I'm you don't encourage a woman to be happy and not do drugs and alcohol by telling her that you would trade her in for snow. Yeah, exactly. Not even a bucket That's... of snow. A handful. A handful. Oh, 
I'm not a fan well, of this. Well, all right. I'm going to try and judge this song without knowing the lyrics now because I've actually given it a pretty good score. I, I like that he got the light on for his backup singers. He, I, I, always <laughs> find, I always find that whistling in a song like this tends to be really foreboding. Like, oh, some, there's a dark twist coming. Turns out, now knowing the lyrics, yeah. I was absolutely right about it. But I actually, I actually really like this song. I think it deserved to come better than eighth. Song seven, performance seven, fashion six for a 20. Oh, we are we are on different we are on different pages. There are times here where the tune kind of reminded me a bit of the Hotel California, which was released in the same year. Yeah, I can um, see that. But, but without, but with all like the catchiness and coolness <laughs> uh, removed, um, I really don't like this one. I gave the song a one, the performance one, the fashion one. The total of three. Uh, wow. Flying yeah, high. he um. He also died of cancer uh, oh. at 53. Belgium, yeah. you're a dark country. Bad things keep <laughs> happening. Let's move on to something yeah. a little more upbeat. 1977's Dream Express with the song A Million in One, Two, Three. It finished seventh. Neither first, second, nor third. It finished seventh. <laughs> oh, my God. Would you like to know a little bit of interesting trivia about these three ladies? I would love it. Not the guy, just the three ladies. Yeah, there's okay. nothing interesting about the guy. Um, <laughs> Late on me. But, oh my God, the three ladies in the late 60s, they were sessions, I'll say that again, they were session singers for Dusty Springfield. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. That's that. That's some pretty cool, you know, ma, my previous job, you know. Yeah, that's something uh, to brag about. That's something to put in your Instagram bio, right? Yeah, backups, backup sings, Dusty S. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, and they had already when they competed, they'd already competed at Eurovision seven years previously in 1970 for the Netherlands, that where is they correct. also where they also came seventh. Yes, that's true. And here they are, 1977, a supergroup of sorts, I guess, with uh, a random dude featuring one guy. <laughs> yeah, I think the performance yeah. of this one is better than the actual song itself. Uh, yeah. The performance is really, I wouldn't be able to keep up with that choreography. That that's, feels a little difficult for me, but they've done really well with it. It's not really like, um, you know, exciting, you know, choreography. It's a lot of, you know, like, ah, oh, it's that whole traditional, there's three ladies, will point, will, you know. Yeah. And the thing that disturbs me is they are all in like beige, sand, grey. Yes, right. Like okay. outfits. So like, the outfits what? are not doing anything for me these days. Oh. Notice, well, there's just one random shot where I think they switched to the wrong camera, and it is just a random shot of like the three ladies' crutches. No, I did didn't you, see did that. You do, go back and watch it, and it's just this I like lie where it just it, it's their crutches, and then they're kind of like someone like notices and is like, ah, their face, their face, <laughs> any camera on their face, and they switch to their faces. Thankfully, it's I, very I, awkward. I like this one. I think it was pretty upbeat, but it, it kind of feels all over the shop as well to me. I'm mm. not sure that it was really a terrific song. Like I said, performance is superior to the song. Song four, performance seven, fashion seven for a total of 18. Oh, see, I went song four, performance five, uh, fashion one. I can't believe wow. you were such a fan of the fashion. It's beige. I, well, Who is yeah. beige to Eurovision? I don't know. I was, felt like I was being polite. I kind of like a big jumpsuit on a woman. 1978, it's Jean Valley, who you'll remember from the 1970 contest, with the song L'amour, ça fait chanter la vie. Love, it makes life sing. And it came second. Woo! Although, if you did ask some countries at the time, it actually came first. This is one of my favourite Eurovision stories ever. Jordan, <laughs> the uh, uh, Middle Eastern nation of Georgian. Uh, jo Not the English quasi-celebrity. No. Is she a celebrity? Can the we still call her a celebrity these no. days? The, the Middle Eastern nation of Jordan uh, broadcast ah. the contest. And... Mm -hmm. Obviously, there was, is, remains, seems to always have been a lot of tension between Israel and its uh, Arab neighbours. One of the things Jordanian television, it's the same thing that kept Lebanon out of the contest because they refused mm. to broadcast the Israeli entry. Jordan refused to accept that Israel had entered the contest, refused to admit that they had sent a song. But 
uncomfortably for Jordan, Israel won the 1978 Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> Not to them it didn't. Jordan decided that Israel still didn't exist and that Belgium had actually won the contest from second place. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be the pettiest act in Eurovision history. Oh, what well, didn't they? Um, uh, didn't they just uh, uh, for the like the transmission? They just cut to like a, a vase of flowers yeah, or something while Israel performed. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, I actually don't mind this song. It was. It's a lovely little number. It's a bit old yeah. school. I get some Udo Jürgen vibes from it. Yeah, I and it definitely might... builds. Yes. Yeah. Definitely builds. Because he actually, he starts playing um, at the piano and then just sort of turns around and gets up from uh, the piano and sort of walks towards the crowd and it yeah. really picks it up to like another notch. Like it's a very kind of like, kind of, I like it. I really yeah. dig it. I like it too. I've given the song a seven, performance a six, but fashion only a five. And I think that's a total of 18. Oh, well, yeah, we're almost the same. I gave the song and performance both got a seven and I gave the fashion a five. A total of 19. Excellent. Yeah. I'd actually say out of all the Belgium songs so far, that one is my favorite. Oh, beautiful. That's what I like to hear. 1979. Yeah. It's Mika Mara with Hey Nana. And quite the opposite of the year before, they've come last. <laughs> oh well can i i think one of the reasons that they may have come last is uh the singer of this song um was quite open about the fact and apparently would tell anyone who would listen that she absolutely hated this song uh she hated this song so much apparently she refused to even uh record uh make a recording of this song exactly, or film yeah. Uh, the, there were these uh, stories, there were rumours on the internet because it was uh, it was picked, the song, from a selection committee. There were six songs. Uh, apparently, she had a, uh, there were rumours of her having a fallout with the lead uh, person in charge of picking the song. So uh, he picked a terrible song. So then she's like, well, fine, you can pick the song, but I refuse to record it. Um, and... Yeah, and to be honest, when she's singing it, there is kind of yeah, a you can see she's not right? happy about it's it. A little bit of a yeah. disconnect. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. This one, so she is singing about maybe getting married. She's going, you know, she's going out to her boy. She's going, maybe we could get married. Who knows? I don't know. Do you want to? Because I might if you want to. But until then, we'll talk about it later. This one, I love her dress. I love her dress. I need to say that. I think it's a really pretty blue dress. It's gorgeous. Yeah. The backup singers though, are they wearing athletic wear? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Just, just no. Yeah. Well, not, <laughs> just, yeah. No. Not much to say about this one. I've given the song a three, performance a three, fashion a five for a total of 11. Uh, see, I went song two, not a fan, performance three. Um, she moved a bit and yeah. <laughs> fashion was a four. <laughs> for a total of nine. Yeah. I, yeah. Just, nah. Like, I think... Just, you know, even if you think it's a shit song, just don't go on about it being a shit song. Like, yeah. that's not going to make it good for anybody. You know, at least, I don't know, ham it up, get drunk, whatever. Just have <laughs> a good time. You know, just not, uh, this is horrible and I don't want to do it. And no one will enjoy it. We are moving into the 1980s, one of my favorite decades at Eurovision, with the song Eur Eurovision, Eurovision by Telex. <laughs> which finished 17th. Now, this one is a big send-up of the contest itself. The band had uh -huh. actually openly said, we hope to finish last, but, quote, Portugal decided otherwise because Portugal gave them a bunch of points that kept them off the bottom of the scoreboard. So if Portugal hadn't gotten in the way, Belgium would have been very happy that year, or at least Telex would have. What do you think about this one? <laughs> oh my god can i say this song is the reason that nerds are usually kept in the basement <laughs> um and out of you oh my god all i could think is it looked like it was do you know the the uk comedy series the it crowd yes yes it looks like the IT crowd was doing like backing keyboards because that was clearly Moss, <laughs> like with his big yeah. afro to like to one side. What was really interesting is like when I looked it up, because you know me, I, I, I had a look. Uh, I, 
the video was showing that it had 4,522 views, not one single comment. Wow. Because, and I think that's a good description because you kind of, you watch this and you're just like, I don't, I don't, what, what do I do with this? I don't know. I don't know how to react. I don't know yeah. what to do. This one, I think you could only describe. So I've just, I've looked back at my notes and I've realized all I've done is write a bunch of buzzwords. Synths galore, cheesy white scarves, the dramatic scarf throw over the shoulders, the kitschy hand glasses, the pockets full of glitter, the prelude from, you know, da, 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 and the camera at the yeah. end. I don't really have much to say about this one. I give them the song a four, uh, fashion a five, but the performance, I've actually given them an eight for making it a little bit jazzy. Oh, what? A total of 17. I, I gave the song a two. I gave the performance uh, a three. Uh, you know me, even if it's arty, don't just stand there. Yeah. Um, and I gave, I gave the same, like, I gave the fashion a five. I can't actually, like, fault uh, their suits. But I just don't understand why do you go to Eurovision with the intention to come last? I know. Like, what's that if, about? I don't know. Maybe what? it was just, like, a marketing strategy. Too crap for Eurovision, which to some people is actually a big positive. If you're not good for Eurovision, <laughs> just let me know. <laughs> 1981, oh Emily Starr with the song Samson that finished 13th. Now, this one is inspired by the story, the biblical story of Samson and Delilah. She's fawning for a man who couldn't care less if he tried. Oh, my God. I mean, what can you say about Yeah, it's Eurovision uh, with a biblical theme in a disco style. I know. Oh. Right? That's almost like oh. in what I've written about it. I know, like, oh my God, like, this is the reason that I come to Eurovision. Um, although I will note, like, all of the ladies, so it's um, it's Emily and the two backup dancers. We're about to say um, the exact all, same thing. Yes, they're all done up in, like, biblical style, you know, like, you know, she's got, like, the toga outfits. But then randomly to the side, there's two male backup dancers in a sweater. Yeah, jeans Like, they're just sweater. wearing a what sweater. Is that? I know, it's crazy. What is that? <laughs> I, I was going to say, I love what she is wearing. Like, mm. bitch, but sexy. Right? I wish I had the confidence to spread my legs out like that. Oh, my God. With those giant splits, like, mm. on the front of her dress up to her ears. Oh, I loved it. Oh. Yeah, I, 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 if you haven't seen Emily Starr's Samson, which finished 13th and I think is an absolute crime. A travesty. Yeah. Absolutely. This is one you really do have to, to look up. Uh, from 1981. I'm not actually that big a fan of the song. It is all the performance and the fashion for me. Like, oh, I think I it's like a terrible song. song. Oh, really? Uh, I've given straight sevens across the board, song, performance, and fashion for 21. Oh, okay. I gave the song three, uh, performance a six, uh, fashion a seven. I actually would have gone higher with the fashion, but I had to take like two points off for the men in sweaters because that is ridiculous. <laughs> All right, 1982 was Stella with Si Tu M Ma Musique, If You Like My Music, which finished fourth. Previously, Stella had represented the Netherlands in 1970, as you had um, previously said, and she was a member of Dream Express for Belgium in 1978. It's, I don't, I, I, I don't know how to feel about this one. Like, I mean, it's a good vocal performance, like, you know, lady can sing, she performs it um, well. It's just, I think it's, she doesn't do anything for me. She just yeah. sort of just stands there and I'm just kind of like, do something, twirl yeah. your tablecloth around. She's wearing a tablecloth, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> one of those like plastic, like tablecloths that looks like faux lace. That's what it reminds me of. But she, I don't know, just twirl it or something, you know, mm. just give it a bit of showmanship. Yeah. I, I, I don't mind the disco fingerprints all over this one. And I kind of really, uh, that, that music box kind of start is like different. It's unique. It's like, Oh wow. That's oh, kind of cool. But for yeah, for those who wow, well, see, I didn't think it was cool. For those who haven't seen it, it's the opening shot. Is it's just of like a child's um, sort of cheap music box where you have the little ballerina um, up the top when you open the lid, does the little da, 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 yeah. da, like dance, you and know, that's spinning part of around the to music. music as well. Yeah, yeah, I liked yeah, the backup so I was singers not a in fan. blue. I really liked that. I was like, oh, hello, this is definitely the nineteen eighties now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, could like for me, this was just this was such a letdown after you know Samson. Like that yeah, woman I know, was right? just around. And this one, this did, is like what, like nine places better. It finished fourth, so that's unconscionable. Yeah, I, I've given the song a five, I, performance a five, fashion a six for a total of sixteen. Uh, well, see, I gave the song a five. I gave the performance uh, a four, which is literally just for her voice, um, and the fashion a three. For a Not total a fan of twelve, of fashion beautiful nineteen. 83 and it's past de deux with rendezvous this one finished rendezvous 18. rendezvous <laughs> rendezvous that's literally all they sing for like three yes. minutes so this one actually set the rendezvous. record it stood for 15 years for the least lyrics there are only 11 words repeated over and over and over again and those words translate to rendezvous but that's the limit and i clam up rendezvous um, rendezvous. <laughs> this one's got some very bizarre dance rendezvous this one's got some very bizarre dance moves going on. They're all like doing the robot and stuff like that. The drummer is absolutely loving himself sick in the background oh of this one. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know what? He is at home right now, no doubt, watching the footage of himself at Eurovision, giving himself a little woo woo. <laughs> like he is so in love with himself. Um, can I say, oh my God, there was controversy when this song uh, was picked. Um... Uh, by the jury, the jury are the ones who uh, would select uh, this. And apparently when it became apparent that the jury was selecting Rendezvous, uh, the, the live crowd, there was booing and hissing at the result. And some people actually stormed <laughs> out in protest when this song was picked. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, I've given the song a four performance an eight. I'm going to give them some, I'm going to give them points for that. I was like, yeah, you know what? Balls to the wall, throw whatever you can at it. Song four performance, eight fashion a five for a total of 17. Yeah. I'm kind of, it's, I mean, actually the music, I really kind of, I, I dig the music and it's really good because you can see the orchestra sort of struggling, <laughs> like to, to like, they along. are really <laughs> putting, yeah. To, so, you know, I do like that. But yeah, the lyrics, it was just so basic. Like I, I dig what they were trying to do, but just no. Um, I just gave it a four across the board. Four, four and four for a 12. That is a total of 29 between the two of us. Yeah. 1984, it's Jacques Ziegers with Avanti La Vie, Go Forward in Life, which finished fifth. This is a good result for Belgium. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. I, I don't know what to say. Oh my God. Okay, so it's him singing, uh, kind of like they're being forced at gunpoint to sing with like four, you know, the other four hostages, his backup dancers sort of, you know, yeah, crowded, how, you know, how around miserable him. miserable do they look to be there? They are so miserable. And what makes it worse is they picked the shortest woman to put at the back and for like 90% <laughs> of the song she is literally in the shadow of his head and you can't see his face. Can yeah. you imagine being like, oh my god, everyone I know, you have to hover around the television, I'm going to be on Eurovision oh my god, this is amazing uh, There's one of my hairs there, I think that's my arm that's, that's my shadow, that's, my elbow. that's definitely my shadow yeah, yeah <laughs> it's just a bunch of miserable looking people very big change of pace from 1983 he looks so bored to be there I know and ironically like for a song about going forward it's very passionless yeah, like a, right? a, a song about going forward you think should inspire you to da 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 but this is just like uh Dead. go forward on arrival, or maybe right? yeah maybe kill yourself I don't know maybe <laughs> well, uh, how on do that. trend like... for Belgium how on trend <laughs> um yeah you look, know. I've given the song a four, performance a three, fashion a five for a total of 12. Oh, you were much more nice than I was. I gave the song a two. I gave the performance one and the fashion a one. For a total of four. You know, you and I are clearly not on the same page this week. We're very, no. very coming at different, different angles. 1985 was Linda Lepom with Let Me New Han. Let Me New Han. Let's me go now. Finished. Can I last. 
<laughs> Can I say this song of Let Me Go Now? Was this written by one of the backup dancers as she was trapped <laughs> with Jacques? <laughs> was it written in the hostage situation? Yeah. Is that where it was written? <laughs> Let Me Go Let Now. Let Me Go. A memoir of my journey at Eurovision in 1984. Uh, this one <laughs> only got seven points and all seven of those points came from Turkey. Oh, oh, that's ironic. A turkey for a turkey. Hey! Hey, So Linda (laughs) is singing about a woman trapped in a loveless relationship. How can this man not see that they are not meant to be together, that they are wrong for each other? Oh, my God. Can I say, is there anyone in Belgium who's happy in their marriage? Like, that's that's all we've had so far. There is so much our marriage is loveless. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty dark time for Belgium. I look. Should I, we send some like couples counseling? We were going to send some mental help. I think we yeah, should send we, some like couples counseling as well. We'll sign them up for those like counseling Zoom calls. You know where you yeah like, yeah because of COVID. Yeah, this, this is this number is just bland to me. Like I find it so bland. I've given the song a three, performance a two, fashion a four. Didn't hate the dress for a total of nine. Obviously, I gave the song a three, performance four, fashion a six. I actually like the dress. How are we so off? What? No, because if you actually have a closer look at the dress, like the front of her dress, it is so low cut. It actually has a plunging neckline, yes, like almost does. down to her navel with like the big, like pearly necklace going down yeah. the front. And I'm like, oh, la, la, slutty, slut, slut. Love it. Get your slut on, get your slut on. Uh, 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 uh. So that spoke to me. Um, well, anything slutty would slut. speak to you. Yeah. This brings us to 1986, which in a massive change of pace, going from last to Belgium's one and only victory in the Eurovision Song Contest with Sandra Kim's Gemma La Vie. Which translates as I love life. Do you know why she loves life? Why? Do you know why? Because she lied on her application. On her application, she said she was 15 years of age. Turns out she's actually 13. That's why she loves life. You're 13. You don't pay rent. You don't have any bills. You literally just like get everything for free, living (laughs) at home, living the dream. Of course you love life. We all want to go back to there. We would all love life. Yes. So after it was revealed, after the contest, Sandra was 13 Mm. and runners up Switzerland decided that was total bullshit so they went to the ebu and they were like disqualify that bitch we won we won we're gonna pull a jordan and pretend that the country that came second actually won uh and the ebu was like no but we are going to make it very hard and fast that you have to be 16. It's the, oh my God, there, there are so many issues. I mean, like the first thing, the first thing I touch on there is the fact that they're like, oh my God, she's only 13. She could be like disqualified. Okay. They, Belgium wasn't getting an advantage by yeah. her being 13. Do you know what I mean? Like if anything else, it's, it's, it's a hindrance. It's like, that reminds me of, it was in America where they found out um, the, that guy, what is he? He's the world's ever greatest swimmer, uh, Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps, and yes. Yeah, Michael Phelps. And it was revealed, there, there was footage that revealed that he was in fact a partaker of smoking the Manadawana. The and the marijuana and people were like oh my god that's it they should have all of his gold medals like removed and you're like no, no, no. So, okay and, and for anyone who's out there thinking of smoking the marijuana um it does not improve your sporting yeah. prowess it, <laughs> If anything else, it very much detracts from your performance to do anything. So not only should they not remove his gold medals, he should be given twice the amount of gold medals. Yeah, Can you imagine up. how fast he would have swam if he wasn't if high? He wasn't high. Up on that. <laughs> no, imagine how much I was slowing him down. But back to Sandra Kim, who we cannot improve was high on marijuana in 1986 she <laughs> is this is peak 90s performance to me shoulder pads yeah. the little sparkly bow tie i love this song it's so upbeat this is honestly probably top yeah. three of my 80s favorite winners this is up the top there what? for me of winners in the 80s but i i can't get 
past the fact she is clearly 13. Mm -hmm. I can't believe not one person in Europe, not one person at Eurovision was like, oh, dude, she's not 15. Like, she is clearly 13. (laughs) Clearly. Like, she might have still been wearing diapers. Like, she is clearly so, so young. She is clearly a child. What did you give this song? Um, I actually like to be honest, you're gonna hate me, but I'm actually not a real fan of this song. Oh my god. Um, I'm really I actually uh I gave the song a five. I give the performance a four because she just stands there and ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, from so, like and a god of thirteen. Yeah. Um and I gave the fashion a five. I actually prefer the guy who came second. Um I in quite a different path from what you've taken this is my favorite entry from this week it's one of my favorite 80s winners i really love this one i've given the song an eight the performance a seven and the fashion a seven because i love them shoulder pads very blanche from the golden girls for a total of 22 that brings us to the end of our rankings for this week tune in next week if you want to hear every song from 1987 through to 2005 that's what we've broken it into for the next episode. Oh, no, I was going to say, I'm, I'm certainly curious to know if it uh, if it's going to continue to... There, I, I was excited this time because this time there were a couple of songs about being happy and moving forward. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm hoping this is the start of Belgium's recovery well, process. Yeah, and... we've ended with Belgium loving their life. So that's a step in the Which... right direction. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah so if you agree with us disagree with us let us know on our facebook tell me if my math is terrible tell me on instagram um it probably is i'm happy for other people to do the <laughs> for me have you got a comment of the week for us okay our comment of the week uh went back we had a look so as i was just saying a lot of these older uh videos don't have a lot of uh comments on them mm-hmm. um but especially especially with the the uh, what is it the Televox Eurovision, um, Telex <laughs> Telex yeah. <laughs> but in 1979, um, on the Misha Mara with the Hey Nana, who absolutely hated her song, uh, there weren't a lot of comments. But one comment just caught my eye, just from the observation of a viewer of Hey, she is a Aguilera. <laughs> And, and you know, I could I say, you know, it is uh, it is true. She is an aguilera, uh, which is a bird uh, native, uh, usually seen sort of around the uh, uh, Los Angeles part uh, of America. Very high, shrill. Oh, no, like Christine Aguilera. <laughs> oh, oh, is there is there a, is there is there a singer? Yes, uh, they call her Christina Southern California Bird. That's what her name translates to. Oh, a lot of, lot of, lot of high wobbling. Yeah, Ah, just a bit. ah, Yeah. ah, Maybe, maybe she was named after the bird. Perhaps. (laughs) So that just that just goes to my that goes to my comment of the week. Congratulations, Um, Christina Aguilera, for winning comment of the week. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and everyone remember to be kind to your local water birds. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening yet again this week. Um, next week, obviously, this Friday, actually, there will be part three of Belgium. Then we will have part four of Belgium next Tuesday, where we will finish da, up da, 2005 da, to 2019. Da, da, da. Oh, the question is, are we gonna are we gonna finish happy? Are we gonna like finally be free of this loveless marriage? You know, will we have pushed forward? Will we have found happiness? Would we have finally caught the Aguilera bird? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, do follow us on Instagram, on Facebook. Let us know what you think. Talk to us. We love to engage with your opinions and what you think. Don't tell me my French or my Dutch is terrible. I already know. Just wait till we get to Croatian week. I'll ruin it so much more than you could ever imagine. <laughs> Thank you for listening. We love you. Good night. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean. oh.